Hey y'all, it's your boy Poseidon, and we got ourselves another episode of the Poseidon cast coming at you, streaming it live. I'm just kidding, no, it's recorded. Um, but if you see over here to the top left, or top right to you guys, top left for me, we got some topics for today that we're going to be discussing um, on this episode of the Poseidon cast. So it seems fun, exciting stuff, let me make sure my volume's on. Perfect. All right, we're doing some one take, you know, whatever, whatever. Okay, so uh, first topic we're going to be talking about is MK1 saved? Then we're going to go over talk about competitive mentality. We're going to talk about what it's like to be active on social media in terms of like the FGC. Like, so normally any topic that I talk about, unless I particularly say it's going to be something different, it's going to be retaining to the FGC or, you know, the Smash community in some capacity. And then we got a couple tournaments this weekend, offline, Texas Showdown and Level Up Expo. We're going to go talk about those, and I'm going to do some predictions for those. So we got a decent amount of stuff to talk about. Um, but first, we're going to talk about, is MK1 saved? So this most recent update, we got a really, really cool character, Nermak, and we got a really, really good update um, getting rid of some of the shenanigans. Like, some of the really broken characters that kind of played not fun game plans and... They toned them down to the point where they're not bad characters, but they they just can't do the same rinse repeat stuff like you know like um, Storm Cell and stuff. So we got we got the update um, characters Raiden, Peacemaker kind of had just really broken, not fun to play against game plans, and they kind of toned those down while giving characters like Rain, Reptile, and Scorpion. People complain about Scorpion's buffs, but essentially the game's in a really good state. The online is really good. Or Mac is super fun. So it's really just a matter of. You know, the, the game seems to be in a really good state. Not only did this happen, but around the same time that we got all of this, Twitch decided to drop um, some skins and turn form of Twitch drops. And what you essentially have to do is if you watch Twitch streams of anyone who has the drops on, which I think they're like automatically on, like I went and checked because I streamed a couple days ago and they were on automatically, I went and checked. Um, so most streamers had them on. Normally people will put it in the description like Twitch drops on or drops on or whatever. And uh, you watch for three hours and you get an Astra skin, you get a Baraka skin, and you get a Scorpion skin. Really, really cool ones for just watching for three hours. And what's really cool about that is it's bringing in a crowd of people who really didn't think to watch live streams. So when I was first getting into the scene back in Mortal Kombat 11, I would just watch on YouTube. I would just like, I would, you know, watch like Sonic Fox or, you know, just competitive gameplay or whatever I could find on YouTube retaining time K11. And I really didn't think to watch um, live streams until, uh, you know, the pandemic happened and we were kind of all locked in and people were streaming more and people had more time. And I was just like, oh, like there's live streams. And then I got into streaming myself and I started watching more. And now I watch Twitch all the time. And we'll kind of get into that with the third topic today being active on social media. But I watch Twitch basically every day. Like it's a weird day if I don't turn Twitch on and watch someone stream or watch a tournament or something like that. It's a very, very uncommon occurrence in my life. I know, right? I'm very, 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 very cool person. I understand. But so that's growing people's streams and people are seeing consistent bumps in numbers to the point where um, I'm not sure if you guys are really active on social media and I guess this kind of dives into the topic but of the third topic of, of today but um, the like people would constantly post the numbers of like Street Fighter and Tekken on Twitch compared to MK. MK was lacking a lot and there was a lot of problems with MK. I actually made a whole video that I still plan on making. Well made. I wrote a whole script for a video where we t talk about all the reasons that MK1 has not lived up to its potential. We had four years between when MK11 dropped and when MK1 came out. A little bit more. It was actually four years between when MK11 dropped and when we even got an announcement for MK1. A little over that. And the thing is, the game was on a two-year cycle, NRS, of releasing a new game. In, in This is including Injustice 1 and 2. Every two years, from Deadly Alliance, which came out in 2002, to MK11, which came out in 2019, 17 years of every two years we got a new game. And then it was over four years before we even got an announcement. So the fact that the game kind of fell flat with bad online, uh, updates that people didn't like, some characters were just incredibly broken, and and then when they nerfed, when they took that away, they kind of nerfed it in a way that people didn't like, which I feel like you can't really satisfy everyone, but they pretty much got at Cyrax. Cyrax is still not a bad cameo, but he went from being like the best to being pretty much not used by most of the cast. And it, it, there's, there's a lot of aspects that I'll probably go into the video because I still plan on making it, but just like online from the black screens to the desyncs to just not being good with the Janet patch coming out. Um, 
the updates people didn't like, um, people didn't like, you know, paying money for skins. And it, it just all kind of added up to be put MK1 in a state where people weren't liking the game. And for a, for a, a, a franchise that's so, that has a big um, casual scene and a big competitive scene, um, it, it was just kind of weird. And it, like, I we run I run um Survivor UTV. I'm co-owner of Survivor UTV. For people that know that, I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, and we were expecting a we were expecting a huge uptick in numbers. We were expecting a whole huge uptick in entrances, and that was the case from when MK11 ended because we ran tournaments basically all the way to the end of MK11, and there's been a big uptick in viewers, a big uptick in players, but not as much as we thought. And there's a couple of reasons for that, and that's like as we talked about, it also really sandwiched between. Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8. And usually if you're in the FGC, especially if you're competitive, you play a lot of fighting games. You don't just play one. Some people just play one, but like you'll even try um, that. Like someone like Tweety just talked about how he, you know, he's not even really that into fighting games, but he really likes Mortal Kombat and just what NRS does in general. But he still played Street Fighter when it came out. He still, you know, played Tekken when it came out and stuff. So it's like people that aren't even really big into fighting games were playing these new games when they came out. So I think all this kind of combined, but now with the with a good update, good online, um, the pro comp got one a hundred thousand more dollars put into it. So it was a hundred thousand dollar prize pool. Now it's a two hundred thousand dollar prize pool. We're getting to the point where we're having uh the um the regional qualifiers. There's been a bunch of people who have already qualified. We have some crazy upsets. We got like Souls Clue from Australia, where a region that was pretty much dominated, qualifying through that region. So now Waz either needs to qualify, needs to come to Combo Breaker and do really well, or qualify through last, last chance qualifier when it seemed all but assured that he was gonna make it. So it's just cool to see Face Hall take down Tekken Master. Um so that's really cool seeing some of these newer players um thrive in the kind of scene, see watching that stuff. Uh, big tournaments like i said we got texas showdown level up expo this weekend we got combo breaker coming up in a couple of weeks we got um ceo coming up we got last chance qualifier into final combat which is june 14th i think through 12th through the 14th something like that um and we got we got a bunch of tournaments i talked about this i think in the first one so i don't want to go too into that but then evo and stuff we got a bunch of tournaments coming up and right when the state game gets put uh, right when all this update comes out and just puts the state of the game in really, really good hands. Um, and it's just in a, in a really good spot. And I, I, I personally have loved MK1 since the beginning. I haven't really had any qualms with it. Some annoying stuff. I hated Raiden Cyrax, I'll be real with you. Raiden Kano honestly wasn't as bad, personally. It's still bad. I didn't really enjoy fighting it. Sometimes you're just going to lose. The game could be a little cheesy. Kind of like Mario Party, you know, when you're, you're playing, you're on the board, and you're, you're winning, you're dominating, you're winning all the mini games. you have all the stars, and then last turn, they like, oh, let's swap the stars. And then you get last place when you've been dominating the whole time. It's kind of like sometimes how it happens it's not like that makes mario party less fun it's just like <laughs> you know that's why people say oh it's a party game and i, I to some capacity um i i believe that but i i don't think it makes the game bad or and sometimes you know you know as long as you're playing solid and stuff like that and understand what's going on you're not going to get cheesed to that gravity you know and i, I just think mk1's in a good state because mk1 saved i don't think it really needs saving um but i think it is and i think we're we're, we're really going into uh a renaissance of mk1 and we're we're in a spot where we have a lot of really awesome competitive action. And if you're not into the competitive scene, I make videos about up upcoming uh, um, tournaments. I made one about Texas Showdown. Actually, I won't lie. I kind of forgot level of Expo was happening this weekend. Um, so I'm going to go talk. I'll probably dive a little bit more into that because I already made the Texas Showdown one. But I'm going to do predictions for both. I'll probably just run through them. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of stuff to really look forward to for MK1 and potentially even more Twitch drops coming. But if you haven't got the skin, yeah, make sure to go watch Twitch. Just turn it on. Even if you don't stay there and watch it for three hours and just leave it on your computer and you'll get those skins. And they're really cool looking. They're purple. Purple's a cool color, especially with skins. Like the Barack one looks awesome. They all look awesome, honestly. All right, so I think I get one saved. Woo! All right, so topic number two, we're going to go into talking about competitive mentality. So this is something that I um, have really looked into and, and thought about because when it comes to just playing the game, for example, when you're playing Combat League, when you lose, you just queue the next match. Or maybe you're salty. It, it, it's aggravating. It really is. But when you're competing, it's just it's a whole new ball game because, like, losing, when you lose once, you get put in a loser's breath bracket and then when you lose twice you're done with the tournament so it, there's a lot more nerves there's stuff on the line sometimes there's money or even just the prestige of doing well um it, it means a lot more in competitive than it does on like combat league 
Um, so it's just trying to uh, develop a, a mentality for that and not letting your nerves get the best of you. And a big thing when it comes to this is just it's just putting yourself through the ringer. Enter as many events as you can. There's online events basically every day. Um, if you have a local scene, I always suggest doing that. There's people that'll be like, don't go offline for it. But you know, if you have a local scene, even if it's like an hour or so away, uh, enter those if you can. Um, but you know, if you've been doing that and you really just want more, I'm gonna try to go into um, some stuff that um, has helped me. And a, a big thing that I've realized whenever I have a mentality of, I don't really care what happens. So it's like, and I think this this is just an overall life thing. Like if you can get to a point where you you want something with everything and you're, you're chasing it with everything that you have, but you're completely content if it doesn't work out is like the strongest mentality that you can have for something. Like you're chasing something, you really want a goal, but if it doesn't happen, you're completely okay with that. And that's what I've noticed like with competing specifically is that when I have a situation where I, I don't really care how I do, but I want to win, but like if I lose, it's whatever. Because there's sometimes I lose and just losing sucks. All right, like let's be real. Let's not try to act like doesn't and everyone needs to be Buddhist monks and just be okay with it. Nobody likes losing, and even when you when it's like um, you know like combat league or something like that, like where you would legitimately have nothing to lose, it still sucks. So when you actually have something on the line, you lose. It it sucks. But trying trying to reach a point where it's like. Something that I, that's helped me is that I, I've won a lot of tournaments. I won offlines, I won onlines for Smash Melee, for Mortal Kombat 11, for Mortal Kombat 1. And my life isn't really that different. You know what I mean? Like winning a single tournament isn't going to change your life that much at all, or pretty much at all. And losing also doesn't change my life at all. So whether or not I win or how I do in a particular tournament doesn't like affect my life. Maybe like the way I treat myself and the, you know, there's a saying that a lot of most of the suffering that we go through is in our heads. And that's very true. Like a lot of the suffering you feel from losing is just in your head and it's something that you're making yourself feel. You can't always control that. It's like, we're not, like I said, we're not Buddhist monks. We can't just fully have 100% control and synergy over all our emotions. It's just not how it works. Um, but like kind of understanding that like, hey, like there are also bigger things like, for example, um, I don't, you know, I hope he's okay with this, but my brother isn't in the best health right now. Like I have pretty good health, not to be like trying to do some comparison thing, but like there, there are bigger issues in the world than not doing good in a tournament. God, I hate living near this intersection, guys. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, I live near a busy intersection and stinks. But there are a lot bigger pressing issues in the world than losing or winning a particular tournament. So it's kind of having the idea that like, okay, it's not going to be the end of the world if I lose. And even if you, it's like, it's not going to be amazing if I win either. Because sometimes you can psych yourself out and you can be like, oh my God, like this is so, like such a big moment and you kind of almost throw the situation. So just kind of understanding that like, okay, even if I win here, it's not that big a deal. Like maybe you tweet about it. Maybe you get a couple of likes. Maybe you get a couple of followers, uh, depending on how big, big the tournament is. Sometimes maybe people will even sub to your, your channel, your Twitch or your YouTube or whatever. And th that stuff's nice, but like there's always going to be another opportunity too. And that's another thing, especially with online. There's always another tournament, dude. There's, you're going to be able to play tomorrow, even later. And I had a conversation with uh, one of my friends, Sunio, a really, really good MK player. I talked about it. He's like, yeah, like back in the day when you when you would go to offlines, if you did bad, you would have to like wait until the next offline. That could be a month, two months from then. You would have to kind of hold that. But online, you could do bad and then the next day enter another tournament and do good. And you don't have to hold that as much. And that's true. I mean, like we're, we're, we, we are in a point where we have online tournaments basically daily big ones for every sunday every sunday coliseum i'm sure there's going to be another season champion that runs i don't know if that's coming back but then there's like just series bushi temple every wednesday there's um tns basically every thursday there's hdgg every tuesday um rock and polos host tournaments basically every monday and wednesday just eight man brackets those ones are really nice they're short and sweet um you, you get some high level competition but you also need to sit around all night because then there's that aspect of competing but that's not really what we're talking about but just enter as many events as you can and realize that like it's it's not the end of the world if you lose and it's also not you know the creation of the world i guess if the opposite if you win you know it's just it's nice and you obviously want to do that but that that's something that'll help your competitive mentality and then in terms of just getting better just play the game and stuff like obviously looking over like your film and your aspects of the game but just just play it you know what i mean don't overthink it just just gain your heart out Play um, when you can. If you want to get better, play as much as you can, and you'll get better. 
100 percent hope that makes sense guys absolutely so okay so we're going to go over to our third topic today which is going to be being active on social media so um in terms if you want to grow in the fdc or the, the fighting community or smash whatever you basically have to be active on social media um my, my screen went blank for a second that was weird okay uh <laughs> we back um but you have to be active on uh social media in terms of so like twitter and uh twitch and youtube and like not only uploading but consuming content and supporting other people um and that's some something i noticed like uh, some people where they, they make pretty good content and but they don't really support anyone else and they kind of just put their stuff out there and they at people and they don't really comment they don't really support they don't watch other people's streams and they don't grow that quickly because they're not they don't have that like or like they have their videos and stuff like that and people are judging them 100 percent about how good the videos are which is you know not a bad thing and that's basically what it is but when you have that extra boost of like okay you have other people that support you um through because they just like you as a person maybe they don't necessarily love your content but they're going to comment like and watch your videos because they like you as a person and having that extra boost can really help you grow in the community and help your content because then once it starts getting bigger then it starts getting in front of more people and then more people can judge how good they are because when you make your first video on youtube if you just put it up it can be the best video ever and the odds are it's not going to get a ton of traction because you don't have anyone that's going to be able to watch it and it'll come to a few people and maybe some people will watch it and stuff and like it's it's possible to do that but the odds are it's not going to grow that much unless you have some place to put it like a like a discord or a twitter and like you can post like okay hey i just made this video and then you get some traffic that way and it's like oh wow this video is really good and then it starts getting comments and stuff like that and starts getting more people's algorithms and stuff but th there is a negative aspect to social media and I, I, when i first decided that i was going to do this topic i was kind of going to go into the negative aspects of it and how it could be mentally draining but there are all positive aspects and i wanted to make sure that i talk about that because you you can make relationships with people like i have a lot of friends where i will get to them friends and i can talk to them and you know we connect and we we talk on a semi-frequent basis i know what's going on in their lives because of social media because you know the, the twitter posts they put out or the the fact that they stream live and we can kind of just have a conversation even if that's text to voice um like what happened on twitch a lot or with youtube and you can see them you know making videos you can comment and stuff like that i think there's a lot of benefits to it but there's also a lot of downsides to it and the thing is um the more active you are the more videos you put out there and the bigger that you get the more negativity that comes around with that it's just inevitable no matter what you do whatever whether you make a tier list especially a tier list but if you make a tier list video or you make a video gameplay or you make a, a opinion video or you make a video about the state of something someone out there is not gonna like it and they're gonna let you know they're gonna and whether that's a form of a comment and the thing is it's behind the screen so you don't need to take it too seriously but they're they're gonna post something negative they're gonna be like wow like this sucks like i've from i've grown try tv's youtube channel um and been active there i try to respond to basically every comment same with my channel and i try not to ignore any comments sometimes it just it doesn't i don't be, i'm not able to get to everything it's hard you know with all the all the stuff that people have going on but <clears throat> it's like you're gonna run some negative comments and these people are like oh wow this is the worst video i've ever seen like these guys suck you suck and it's like it's almost like when it's really egregious and really mean, they're like, you are fucking terrible. You're a terrible person. You should die. People don't necessarily say, I don't think I've ever got anything that bad. People will say, oh, kill yourself or KYS or whatever. Um, but it's not even though the egregious comments. It's like the subtle ones. It's like, wow, this is, this is terrible. This is the worst video I've ever seen. Like very short and sweet or kind of like, even if you're, especially if you're very active, you'll get like subtweeted. So that's like when people don't at you at all and you don't know it's about you, but like you make a post about something and then someone else like an hour later sees it and then makes their own post kind of commenting about your post. But, and then it's like, it's like that stuff. It's the tiny stuff that kind of gets to you. And it's like, I wasn't very active on social media before I got into the F2C. I wasn't at all, basically. I had a Facebook and I think that was it. And I didn't really even go on it. It was very, very occasionally. But when I got into the FTC, and especially when the pandemic hit, I was, I was going to tournaments and stuff, and my boy Scash was like, you need to make a Twitter. Because not only is it, like, if you want to grow yourself, but, like, if you just want to know about tournaments. Like, it's, like, people are like, oh, how do you know about all these tournaments? It's like, well, a lot of people tweet about them, or, like, and then, it's like, they do them on a recurring basis, so then you kind of figure it out that way. I don't like TNS, you know what I mean? I haven't seen a single post ever about, like, oh, TNS tournament tonight, Thursday night. It's, like, it's just because it's Thursday. We know TNS from Mortal Kombat 1's happening that night. 
it's kind of like Shiraru Sunday. It's like, oh, it's Sunday night. Shiraru Sunday is happening. And then Tweety, you know, Tweety's doing Fatal Friday. It's Fatal Friday. It's Friday. Fatal Friday is happening tonight. And uh, I'm also doing, I'm also doing Injustice by Weekly every Friday of the Friday. So it's like, okay, it's a Friday. Maybe it's happening this week or maybe it's next week and you can kind of go check it out. But if you're not active on social media, you're not going to be able to find that, at least some of these places in the first place. So then, yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons to be active on social media um, in the FTC. Um, whether you want to grow or you just want to know about tournaments. And like they said, there's a lot of negative aspects and there's just negative people on there. People like, and then the way I kind of like to look at it is like, if someone is really mean, it's like, no, it's like, it's not like their life is going really well. And not to be like, well, they're a loser. It's just like, you can almost feel like, you can like feel like bad for them. Because like, nobody who is this mean to some random person they never met before about an opinion it is taking it out. It's taking some other aspect of their life out on you. And being able to recognize that and not argue back, it's not even like you need to be nice or kind to them. You can ignore it. Or you can be nice and be like, hey, you know, I respect that opinion or whatever. You can be, and that usually that like trips them up or whatever. Like if you're really, like some of my worst interactions online, um, I remember, um, I don't want to call him out because he's one of my good friends, but guy at Hervis 7, 720, also known as your monitor. Um, the first interaction I really had with him, he entered Shari Sunday, and he was like, this tournament fucking sucks. Like, learn to run a fucking tournament. We run, like, a bunch of tournaments. And it was just kind of a miscommunication. It was, like, a misunderstanding on his part. And and then um, I I ran into him in Combat League, and I beat him, and then I was like, oh, you need to learn how to play fucking Raiden. And so, <laughs> like, because of the way he said about my tournament. And he's like, oh, he's like, you fucking suck. You're not going to make Elder God this season. This was back in 11. You're trash, you know, play me right now. And they ran to him again in Combat League. And he he beat me, he teabagged me. And then it was fun because I was streaming. And he was streaming at the same time too. And I right, right after that happened, I raided him. <laughs> he's like, oh, shit. He's like, well, you know, the only reason that I talked shit about you was because you said my Raiden sucked. And I was like, well, yeah, the only reason I talked shit about you is because you said my tournament sucked. And he's like, ah, you know, it's whatever. We kind of just squash it. And now we're really cool. Like, I, he's a really cool dude. Um, we actually played at Evo. We played a Sat. He beat me. And then we just, like, hugged it out afterwards. And, like, it's cool because, like, th there's been a couple of situations uh, where that's happened. And then you kind of flip it around. And then that person goes from being, you know, an enemy and in, in quotation marks to someone who you know is a resource for you whether that's a friend or someone that can help you in some capacity so that's what's really cool um and sometimes you know when people are being really negative to you you can flip that situation around and it, it can just be hard and you know sometimes it's daunting and sometimes you're just like fuck man like it's it you don't want to think about it too much um, and like sometimes it's just like you, but you can't always control your emotions. This kind of goes with the competitive mentality thing. Is like you're not always going to be able to control how you feel about a situation. You want to, and you want to be like, I'm so hard, and nothing can get to me, and uh, you know everyone else is a pussy, but me, I am the best, and I I could never be shaken. But it's just not true a lot of the time. For us. some people, are just super hard. But then even in that aspect, they probably had you know a childhood where maybe they had really really strict parents, and they kind of had to deal with that aspect, and they kind of had to, or maybe they had really emotional distance parents, and they kind of had to shut down their emotions because they wouldn't get anything validated. And in a way, that can be kind of sad in its own regard, even if they are really hard and think you are soft or you think you're a snowflake or whatever, and they're actually hard. It's like that they was like, well, what got into that point? What made them like this? And, uh, you know, it is what it is. And I try, I mean, I try to be good with it. I sometimes still argue with people, but I'm getting better at it. And I'm just kind of learning to just either ignore it or try to respond positively to it. And um, I think that can help you have a better relationship being active on social media and not have it be so draining. And at the end of the day, sometimes you just got to turn it off and walk away and just not look at it. I mean, you see, like, the bigger you get, you know, we saw this happen in the Smash community with uh, Odie Schwab the best Super Smash Bros. Melee player in the world right now, won a tournament, and people were just like, oh, wow, this seems so boring when he wins. It's not fun. It's not entertaining. He sucks. I don't like him as a person. He's dry. I don't like his personality. And, like, he was just kind of consuming and consuming it, and he kind of just, like, it was having a bad effect on his mental health. Sometimes you just got to turn it off and walk away. And easier said than done, but that's just, you know, beside an advice for you. All right, guys. So that is it in terms of those topics. So now we're going to talk about Texas Showdown Love Up Expo happening this weekend. Texas Showdown is going to be happening uh, today, Friday, 
Saturday and Sunday. Wave one and two of pools happening today. Wave two is in th wave three and four happening tomorrow. And then top 12, so do top eight, is happening Sunday. Level Up Expo, nothing's actually going to be on stream until top eight, which is going to be happening on Sunday. I can go over and talk about um, where you can watch those things and stuff like that. Um, and we can go, I'm going to go over and do some predictions. I'll do some predictions of Texas Showdown. I'll do some predictions of Level Up Expo. I'll talk a little bit more about Level Up Expo with the players and storylines and stuff. Uh, because I already made a video dedicated to that. So if you haven't seen that already, I'll leave a link in the description for Texas Showdown. Um, give that video a watch because those are probably by far uh, the videos I put the most time and effort into. And they're not always the best received because it's about something like the competitive scene and storylines and stuff like that it's not something that is a, a very common thing made so it's kind of hard to get a low traction this video actually is done pretty decently you know like 600 views that's a lot of views from a guy like me so uh <laughs> so yeah if you want to watch that out but yeah let me just um get the the texas showdown um i have a face cam if that's cool nobody can really tell me not to because this isn't happening live all right so i'm just gonna do a little quick i'm not gonna try to you know take too much time i'm just gonna kind of run through this a little bit very good. Okay, so let me let me uh, this a little bit. Okay, cool, cool. So we have Dialog in this pool. I think Dialog's gonna get to here. I think Dead Snow Cynics Cynics is really good. But I think it's gonna be Dialog versus Dead Snow right here. And my prediction is it's gonna be Aquaman, who's a good player, honestly. Like he, you know, he's known for his TOing. He's known for his um his uh you know commentary but he's a pretty good player so i think we're gonna get bbg versus uh mr aquaman right here or mr aqua then we're gonna get bbg versus dialog i think we're gonna have dialog so dialog gonna be winner side top eight bbg gonna be losers top 12 and then you have one person making it through losers um and i think that's gonna be dead snow um super chevy bike of yeah, no, there's some good players here but uh oh chino chino i don't know that's sucio boy um but then my predictions are going to say the same. We have uh, Dead Snow making out of losers, BBG making out of losers, uh, Dialog making out of winners. Okay, let's go to the next pool here. I'm going to probably circle back. I guess I'm going to try to just kind of quickly. We got Icy Boogie, we got Trap Hustler, we got Kel Khan, Fido the Man, uh, your boy Rio, I saw Ricky. Um, okay, so my prediction will probably have. Uh, your boy Rio versus Ricky right here. We'll have Buggy versus... I don't even know. Trap, Trap Hustler? Kill a Ken? I'm going to go Kill a Ken. So we're going to have Buggy versus Rio here. I think Rio winner side. Uh, Buggy loser side. And then we're going to have Iso Ricky loser side on this part. That's just my predictions. Okay, now we keep it going. Keep it going. Okay, so we got Hourglass. Uh, we got um, uh, Alex is Nasty, Toby, Super Saiyan God, Big Zo, Dark Lee, Cory the Dragon. Uh, some good players to think about right there. Okay, so I think we're going to have Hourglass versus SSG here. We're going to have Big Zo versus Dark Lee. And then I think Hourglass versus uh, Dark Lee here. And then I think Hourglass wins Hourglass. Insanely good online player. And then I think we're going to get uh, SSG through Losers. My prediction, SSG through Losers, Dark Elite, uh, our last right here. Uh, okay. And next wave here. Our last winners from that pool, if I didn't say that. Okay, so we got Striker, uh, Freeze, Enzo, Violet, Azar, Delta A, Super Andretti, Yo AJ. This, this pool, so some of these pools, I feel like these pools are like kind of uneven. With how, uh, like, some are just incredibly stacked and some are like, I don't recognize some names, but, you know, maybe the local people who are really good don't really play online. So I'm thinking here, we got Striker. Probably, I think I'm going to Striker versus Victor Freeze. I'm going to Striker. Enzo's really good. Last time he played, he played Quan against me, and I got kind of smoked. I won't lie. Uh, but I'm going to go Striker versus Victor Freeze. We're going to go Violet versus, I'm going to go Violet versus Delta Heat here. Super Andretti could do it, though. So I'm going to go Violets versus Delta 8. Violets wins. Striker versus Victor Free. Striker wins. I'm going to go Violets, winner side, top 8. Striker, good on the losers. Victor Free is going to make it on the loser side. That is my opinion. Okay, so that is all the pools so far. So I'm going to have to go a little bit, uh, do a little bit of mathematics here. 
so if we show this okay so we have dialog versus i have violets coming out here and then we have who did i have coming out here because then hourglass versus i don't think i had boogie right i did not have boogie i had rio so we're gonna have rio versus hourglass and violets versus dialog and then we have dialog versus wow violets versus dialog that's actually going to be that's a rough draw for dialog because violets actually beat um him at frosty Fostings, and uh that's just a rough matchup for shao Kahn or shao Kahn, general shao different game uh but i still think dialog i think dialog's got dialog versus hourglass here um this loser side is going to be rough <laughs> i probably should have done a little bit more preparation because i don't know i said ricky was going to make it out losers uh, Violets. I think Striker is going to be there. Cause I have Violets being Striker. So we Violet, Striker versus Ricky. I think Striker wins. So Striker's top eight right there. Uh, BBG versus. Okay, Dark Elite's supposed to make it out. So the, I have Dark Elite making it to the end and then losing. Because he has Big Zo here. So they have him going here. So I have, where Dark Elite is, I would have SSG. And where Big Zo is, I would have Dark Elite. So. Dark Elite versus Mr. Aqua, who I think I had predicted to come here. So Dark Elite, I think Dark Elite wins that. Um, so the striker here, um, BBG, which I had versus, who did I say was gonna peek down here again? SSG, BBG versus SSG, oh my God. That's gonna be crazy, I have SSG. I said SSG was my sleeper top eight pick. So yeah, so it would be uh, SSG versus striker. And then we have, what if it was gonna make it out here? And then um, Dark Elite. So Dark Elite, Striker, SSG. What if it was gonna make it out here? So they have Rio losing there. I would have Boogie losing there. So it would be Boogie versus, Boogie versus who did I have coming out? Delta Eight. The Delta Eight coming out to the loser side. Who did I have coming out the loser side? Victor Freeze. so. Bookie versus Victor Freeze. That's going to be a crazy one as well. Oh, man. I'm going to go Victor Freeze. So we have... Um, oh, wow. I, I lost track. Dark Elite, Victor Freeze, Striker, SSG. Okay. Perfect. Dark Elite, Victor Freeze, Striker, SSG. So... Okay, let me go back here because they, they have big BG coming. But they have big BG coming from, I have SSG coming from. So, bottom top. So, SSG is going to be fighting Striker. And Dark Elite is going to be fighting Victor Freeze. I think Dark Elite wins that. I think. Um, Striker versus Dark, Dark Elite beats. And then Striker is fighting SSG. So, Striker beats SSG. Uh, Dark Elite beats Victor Freeze. So, that means loser A. Do they not even have that up? What the heck? Okay, loser of B. So loser of B, they have made this super confusing. So B, that'll be um where, so that'll be, I have Rio. So Rio will be fighting um, Dark Elite, right? <laughs> Rio will be fighting Dark Elite and Man, this is just 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 getting to me. Okay, SSG will come through here. Okay, so Rio will fight Dark Elite and Violets will be fighting Striker again in the run back. Okay, that's what that's what it seems like. All right, I have Striker in the run back and I have Dark Elite versus I have Dark Elite right here. So we have Dark Elite versus Striker. I think Striker wins that. And then we have Dialog versus Hourglass. I have Hourglass winning that. So dialogue versus striker, right? I have strike. I have dialogue winning that. I have dialogue resetting the bracket. I have hourglass winning. Is what I think is going to happen. Even though I had dialogue as the favorite, I think our, it depends on how, how good hourglass can convert over to to, um, to offline. We shall see. But I think hourglass wins after getting bracket reset. And those are my predictions for Texas showdown. All right, so now let's go over to level up extra. Level up extra should be easier because it literally just it just pulls in the top eight. <laughs> it's a little confusing, but that is my predictions for for um uh Texas showdown. Okay, so a little bit of uh 
I can't tell. I always go pool by pool. So it looks like both pools are happening um, tomorrow at 2, and then top 8 is Sunday, following day. So, okay, we got Gambler. We got uh, Slayer, Slayer, Legend, and the, um, and the you know, the, a streamer, um, just really, really good MKX player. Was really good at the beginning of MK11. Still a very, very solid player in general. I do think that prediction is right, though, as we have, I think, Gambler. Goes out winner's side. I'll give it these predictions so I don't. Um, then we have Han Rashid, Too Easy, Menzo. Why does it seem familiar? But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume it's going to be Han Rashid versus Too Easy with Han Rashid winning. And then King Gambler versus Slayer with Slay with King Gambler winning. And then we have two top eight spots. I think those top eight spots are going to go to Slayer and to Too Easy. All right. So we have winner's side. We have uh, Gambler versus Han, and then we have Slayer and, um, we can go back and figure that out, but Slayer, too easy. All right, and now let's go to player two. Let's go to bracket number two. We got Pulse, Bolt Auto, Chris G, Sizoth, Gur? Why is Gur not, why is Gur seated here? That's a, that's interesting. That's definitely interesting. Gur not even seated to... Is Gur not going? I'm gonna predict as if Gur is going. But Gur, Gur right there. Gur right here versus Pulse. And Chris G versus Sizoth here. Is that is that the Fierce? I'm not sure I must be playing. Chris G's Chris G hasn't really been playing the game though, but Chris G's so fundamentally solid. Oh man, that's a hard one. Cause Fear. <sighs> I'm going to go Chris G. Chris G here against Sizoth. I think Sizoth wins, though. I think Sizoth beats Chris G and the losers because winner's side top A. And we have Pulse and Gur right here. I think Pulse wins. Gur loser's side. And then full auto loser's side. Honestly, unless they're on the same side. S, S goes here. If Chris G loses, Chris G would go to S to fight AJ. Who else do we have? Because we have Gur. Because we have full auto. Fauna would likely lose here to Gur. So, oh. Loser of, oh yeah, so no, they would be on the same side. So I think Fall Auto over Chris G right there. And then that leaves the door open to, oh yeah, Gur on the, Gur on the other side. Yeah, Gur, Gur right here. Mm. So Fall Auto here, Gur here. Size off and um, Pulse. All right, so let's go to top eight. So I got to do these predictions here. So we have Gambler versus Rashid, which we have. We have Pulse versus Sizoth, who we have here. Uh, Slayer versus Too Easy, and then Full Auto versus Gur. So I think Gur beats Full Auto again in the run back. I think Slayer beats Too Easy. I think Pulse beats Sizoth. I think Gambler beats Rashid. Han Rashid. Han Rashid goes down to losers. Um... So Han would go here, B1, loser of B, what would B1, B2, loser of B, so that would be size off, size off versus Slayer. I think Slayer wins that one too. Slayer here, and then we have Han Rashid versus Gur. Wow. I think Han Rashid wins that one just because he has so many characters. He can find a matchup that just Garrett struggles with. So. Slayer versus Han Rashid. I got uh, Han Rashid. And then we have Gambler versus Pulse. I think Gambler wins. Pulse goes down here. Pulse versus Han Rashid. Pulse versus Gambler grands. And I think Gambler takes it. Winner's side. As my prediction, Gambler DG boys is going to take the tournament over Pulse. Pretty stacked tournament, 42 players. So this is going to be streamed. Let me go uh, just find. Because like uh, Pools isn't going to be streamed at all. And it's just going to be top eight. And that's going to be happening on so it says it's happening from two to six on ceo gaming i'll make sure to leave a link to their stream in the description um and if you want to find out where texas showdown stream go watch my texas showdown video that link's in the description because then you can find stuff in that description um but you know, two to six p.m and i'm assuming that's going to be two to six western or pacific time that's where they are so it's a three hour so i think five o'clock start time for uh, est 
And so that's going to be right during SRS. Boo, boo. Watch our SRS instead. SRS starts at 7, so it starts at 5. So it'll probably, probably be close to over by the time it starts. Maybe they can raid us. I know they wouldn't do that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's going to be it, guys. Uh, that is going to do it for the Besidecast episode number 3. Please make me sure make sure to let me know. What do you guys think? Do you guys like these videos? What topics would you like me to potentially discuss in the next one? I'm going to do these weekly. So please let me know what you guys think. Should What should I talk about? Do you like these? What do you guys think of my predictions? And just overall everything. Just leave, just leave a comment. Just like and comment, all right? Just, just do that for me. Can you do that for me? <laughs> Thank you all so much, and I'll see you guys at the next video.